So now we're ready to move on to some drills and we're going to be studying washes. Washes are how you apply the paint to the paper. Now when I work with watercolors, I like to have a slight angle. And so what I'm going to do is just take a couple little books, put them under my paper so I have this slight angle going down. The reason is, is I want the water to fall down and gravity will pull it in this direction as I work. Now what we're going to start with, we want to create a little grid. So you're going to need your straight edge and a pencil. And we're just going to create a grid. I'm going to do a few. I'm going to divide my paper into three this way. And then a few going this way. So I have a grid of 12. Now the first wash that I'm going to teach you is called a flat wash. F-L-A-T. The reason it's called a flat wash is it's going to be one shade of a color throughout. It's going to be flat. I'm going to use the purple and I'm going to load up my paint. Now remember what I had said in the about having more paint rather than less paint? This is where it's very important. If you're covering a full box with one shade of purple, you're going to want to make sure you have enough paint to cover that whole box. So I'm going to load up my brush. I want it really nice and full. Notice how you can load it up without it dripping, but there is a lot of paint on there. So I'm going to load it up. I'm going to start at the top and work my way over. When I work like this, I like to pull the paint to the side. I don't like to pull the paint this way. The reason being is you don't get as nice straight of a line and also the brush tends to soak up the paint versus laying it down. And you'll see here, you'll start to get what's called a drip where the paint collects before you add the next line to it. And that is what you want. That keeps that line from drying and leaving kind of these streaks behind later. So I'm going to work all the way down and I keep loading up my brush because I want that drip. I want it to collect there. Now don't worry if your drip all of a sudden drips down. That might happen um, as you get used to how much um, paint your paper can actually hold. And as I'm done, I'm going to dry off my brush and then I'm going to soak up the drip with a dry brush. And I, if I have to do it twice, that's fine. I'm going to soak it up just down there. And there you go. That is a flat wash. I'm going to do one more, but I'm going to do it over here. I don't want to work right next to it in either of these boxes because it's still wet. And if I were to work next to it, it would bleed into the wet paint. So you want to work where it's dry. So I'm going to mix up another color. I'm going to do some pink. Remember, it's really important to have more paint rather than less paint. And then I'm going to load up my brush. I'm going to start at the top. Now in this, I'm going to show you kind of mistakes that can be made. So as I work my way down, get to the bottom. Notice how I work top to bottom. I don't work down here and then come back up here because later when I go over that, you'll see you might get like some lines and you, and you don't want those. Also, it might drip in there. I never want to work down here and then say, oops, I forgot a spot and try to get it up there. It's going to leave a watermark. You want to work carefully and fill all the space as you work down drying off the brush and soaking it up. And again, you never want to try to touch up a space up there because look how it pulled up the paint. There you go, flat wash. So for the remainder of this, I want you to practice all flat washes. Let any boxes dry before working next to them. Just work your way all around and fill the grid with all flat washes. Practice makes perfect.